Is Israel really that bad? Why is everyone attacking Israel so hard? After all, isn't it the only true democracy in the Middle East? I mean, citizens have freedom of speech. Women are treated as equal. They even have gay rights. They have the vegan capital of the world. So people living in Israel seem to enjoy a pretty comfortable life. So what is the problem? We all know that there was a tiny little bit of issue back in 1948. When Israeli settlers came to a land called Palestine, they were surprised to find that people are already living there. Out of courtesy, of course, these people were politely asked to leave or enjoy a painful death. Nothing new. It's similar to what happened to American Indians when Europeans came to America. However, at some point, Israelis were so polite to offer the Arabs who stayed living in what became now their land a chance to be an Israeli citizen with an Israeli passport. The story of this video begins here with a Palestinian slash Israeli slash Arab girl. Let's hear from her. Hi, my name is Leila. I'm a simple person. I want simple things out of life. I want to study, find a job, get married, have a family. You know, the usual. I come from Al Nasra, and Al Nasra is like any Arab town in Israel, where houses are cramped and congested. My family would like to move to a bigger place, as we're eight people living in a two bedroom house. However, the government owns most of the land. So it looks like we have to build on top of our existing house to make extra room. I wanted to apply to universities, but I found out that I have to take an exam that's almost impossible to pass. It was weird when I figured out that this exam is exclusively for Arabs. Jews didn't have to take it apparently, but how come? We all graduated from the same school. So, I gave up on the whole university idea and wanted to find work. I couldn't though, because most job offers go to Jews. I then tried to find work in other cities, but I also couldn't. See, you might not know that every part of Palestine is controlled by the Israeli police and is divided into six sections. Gaza, Jerusalem, the 1948 occupied Palestinian land and three other sections in the West Bank. It's almost impossible for an Arab like me to travel from one section to another for work or any other purposes. However, Jews don't face many issues moving between sections, which is again weird because I'm a citizen too, right? Today, if you were a Jew from any part of the world, you can claim your Israeli citizenship immediately. Move to Palestine and be given a house and a job while millions of Palestinian refugees around the world are denied a passport and aren't allowed to visit. If you were so lucky to be able to travel as an Arab though, make sure you're ready for the fun experience. The West Bank alone has over 700 military checkpoints where they have prepared special lines labeled Arabs for us. You better get your snacks because you will be standing there for hours, packed in between hundreds of people waiting in that same line, hoping to make it to the other side. In winter, they aim cold fans on the queues and in summer, they blow hot air. They also have the right to strip you, delay you, or deny your entry without any explanation. I'm a bit lucky though, at least I can travel outside the country. Arabs in the West Bank are not allowed to use Israeli airports, but that's okay. They just have to cross a bridge to Jordan and travel from there, where most countries don't allow them in. It seems that these are not well-known issues to the world. So far, I'm managing, but sometimes I get really scared. You might not know, but soldiers at checkpoints and Israeli settlers have a legal right to shoot any Arab they sense danger from. Many Arabs would feel safer if they had a weapon to protect themselves, but only Jews are allowed to own self-defense weapons. 
I read once about apartheid in South Africa. I couldn't help but think of how similar my situation is to them. Could Israel be an apartheid state? Well, what is apartheid? Apartheid is an Afrikaans word that means separateness. It describes a state that separates people's residence, work, rights, and laws based on their color, religion, or other elements. For tens of years in South Africa, there were 148 apartheid laws in the country. Blacks and colored majorities suffered a great deal to not be discriminated against just because of their skin color. So what can you do today to free Palestinians from discrimination based on their race? Putting international sanctions on Israel is only the first step into taking real action against the Israeli occupation that has been going on for 73 years. Another huge step is for the Palestinians to unite under a strong leadership. The Palestinians need their own Nelson Mandela. As for you, you can speak up about the truth on social media. You can put pressure on your government to take action. You can boycott Israeli brands. You can be the voice of the oppressed. Salam.